All great flavors from your barbecue start with charcoal. So today we're gonna find out, can you actually taste the difference? And is it worth spending nearly 50% more for some of those premium brands versus the stuff that you can find at big box stores? Let's find out. Hey, I'm James from Smoking Dad Barbecue. And if you've been subscribed to my channel for a while, you already know last year I did a video comparing my top five favorite premium brands of charcoal to pick a winner. Now, if you saw that video, my best value charcoal was Kamado Joe Big Block, and our overall winner was the Jealous Devil behind me. But since then, a couple things have changed. You see, the problem was a year ago, COVID was just starting, and I think maybe the supply chain was a little disrupted. Some bags were a little worse for wear, but there was a small period where I was getting a lot more chips and chunk, particularly in my Fogo bags, as well as a few of my big block bags. Flash forward a year, these things look all squared up. I've had amazing consistency out of my last couple of bags of big block, my last couple of bags of Fogo. And so I think this is no longer a fair criteria to go ahead and crown a champion. So let's update this test with a 2021 version. And what we're gonna add is a new element to go along with our price criteria, which we had last year, and that's taste. I think that's ultimately the, the key deciding factor, which is what's the best charcoal for money and taste. And you guys have asked a lot about this. Some brands, you've been loving the charcoal flavor. Other ones, you've got a bit of a taste or a flavor profile that's just not right for you. And so what we're going to do today, is we're going to start three different fires using our top three brands of charcoal. I've gone and spatchcocked some chickens and cut them into halves. And we're going to do a half uh, chicken on each of our three brands of charcoal and do a taste test at the end to revisit the 2021 charcoal champion. Want to take you inside while we now want to season up our birds and we'll come back outside a little bit later on and a little bit darker when it's time to fire up our three different fires and get this taste test on the road. Okay, I've taken our chickens out of the fridge after they've been salt brining for a couple hours. So let's go ahead, flip them upside down. We'll season the back side first and then season the presentation side last, just so nothing gets messed up. And then I'm just using our homemade rub. I'll put the details on the side here for the video. So if you want to make that, there's no extra salt since we've already salt brined these. I'll take you fast forward while we season these up. All right, let's fire up the Jealous Devil in our Kamado Joe Jr. All right, let's let that come up to temp before we install the heat deflector in the grid. All right, let's get some Fogo in the Big Joe. All right, let's fire up the Fogo. Okay, so for the bigger Joes where we have heat plates, what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and drop in the divide and conquer rack system along with the X accessory ring so that I can drop my heat deflector plates like so in a pizza pie configuration so that they are pre-warming with the rest of the grill. So I won't install the cooking grates just yet while we let that come up to temperature. Let's do the same thing with our classic and a bag of big block. Okay, let's open our big block. All right, let's fire up our big block. Okay, and just like our Big Joe, let's go ahead and install our X accessory ring on the middle level of our divide and conquer rack. And once again, we'll install the deflector plates in a pizza pie configuration, allowing some heat to come up and warm our upper ceramics before we'll push those together. Okay, now that our junior's uh, showing some temperature, let's go ahead and adjust that bottom vent down to one finger. I'm gonna close the top vent to just barely open up here. And if you're using the daisy wheel, that would be about a quarter inch or so showing on the pedestals. And let's go ahead, get out our cooking grid, as well as our heat deflector. And just go ahead and drop this in so that it can pre-warm. I'll just move the camera a little closer so you can see the coal bed. We're not dropping them in on a, on a raging inferno. That's because we don't want anything to crack. 
So we want this to pre-warm now that we've got the coal started. So I'll just put the camera back and we'll finish installing everything. Okay, so while we're waiting for all three grills to come up to temperature, let me explain a little bit more about our temperature that we picked for today, as well as our protein. So starting with the temperature, I'm going to be aiming for about 280 to 300 degrees Fahrenheit. And this is normally a lot lower than what I like to use for chicken or any poultry for that matter, because it renders out the skin a little bit better at higher temperatures. But higher temperatures leads to really, really clean combustion, which reduces the amount of flavor that you can taste from a charcoal. Where you really notice the taste of a charcoal is in that sub 300 degree temperature range where you're doing more low and slow type smoking. And so if you've got someone in your family who objects to smoky flavor, it's usually from a few things. It's usually those lower temperatures as well as the charcoal itself. And so this will really stress test the charcoal in terms of what can provide clean combustion and great tasting smoke at a lower temperature. And the second variable is the protein that we picked for today's cook. And so out of all the things that we could be doing, outside of you know, a bread product, chicken will be one of the best for absorbing the smells, the aromas, the taste of our charcoal itself. And so I think that'll give us the best opportunity to highlight the little nuances and differences between these three brands of charcoal. So hope that it helps explain why we picked the temperature, why we picked the protein. Let's let these uh, continue to come up to temperature. And then what I'll do in the background here as they do, uh, once I see that 280 to 300 degrees on the dome, we'll go ahead and start adjusting our bottom vents down to one finger on all three grills and adjusting our top vents to be holding about 280 to 300 degrees Fahrenheit. And that should be just to the right of our first line on our control tower top on both the Big Joe as well as our Classic Joe. I'll see you in a couple of minutes when we're ready to start cooking. All right, our Joe Jr. is up to temp. Let's go ahead and get a bird. Just set that right like that. It's good, onto the Big Joe. Okay, let's get the Big Joe, a bird. <laughs> a lot of space for more stuff there. So that's all right, onto the Classic. Okay, let's get a bird on the Classic. It's good, let's close it up. All right, we got all three chickens on, and as you can see, all three grills are holding right at 300 degrees Fahrenheit. But before our chicken fat starts to render and fills the air with wonderful aromas of cooking chicken, let's take the opportunity to come a little closer and see if we can get an appetizer for what we might be in store in terms of the aroma and maybe the flavor that might be imparted on our chicken. Let's start with the Kamado Joe Big Block as that's right behind me. Let's get nice and close here for a bit of a... Mm, it's got a really nice smell. It's almost got a little bit of a, a sweetness to it. If I'm trying to place it, if, if I maybe use the analogy of coffee, this is smelling like a Starbucks blonde roast where it's got nice aroma, but it's not overpowering. And maybe you get a note, um, there's no nuttiness or anything like that, but um, a bit of that sweet. Yeah, definitely like a nice, sweet, mild, but noticeable aroma. Let's go check out our Jealous Devil on the Joe Jr. So start wafting a little bit of the smell from the Joe Jr. And if we're sticking with the coffee analogy, this is definitely a bold Colombian roast. It's not sweet. There's maybe something a little funky for lack of a better, a better sense, but this would definitely be the bolder of the two. Let's go check out Fogo. Okay, so for our Fogo, kind of smells like hot air. If I had to give this a coffee, I don't even know if it is coffee. It's more like hot water or Dunkin' Donuts. Sorry, Dunkin'. All right, so I'm really excited to see how this will turn out now that we've got a bit of an appetizer for the taste that might be in store. And I'm really putting a lot of emphasis on the taste because when we remove the consistency from last year to this year, we're all square. If we look at the price, 
the Fogo Super Premium as well as the Jealous Devil are the exact same price and the Komodo Joe pulls ahead on value here. It is less expensive by about 10 bucks a bag uh, where I am. Uh, so we are neck and neck really close. So the taste test is going to be a really important uh, distinguishing factor. I will keep though from last year, our scores on sparks. So as you saw, as we were lighting the same a year on, Jealous Devil and Komodo Joe Big Block can withstand the flamethrower torch without spraying me with sparks or hitting the deck. The same is true uh, as my experience last year, the Fogo sparks the most. So right now we are still in a neck and neck race really for that top position um, based off of uh, Komodo Joe and Jealous Devil to see if the taste is enough to reverse our running order from last year or if Jealous Devil can hang on to its crown. I'll rejoin you in about an hour when these birds should be done. Okay, it's been about an hour and our birds are nearly done. Now, one of the downfalls, again, of cooking at this lower and slower temperature of 300 degrees Fahrenheit is we're just not going to get that amazing skin that you would get at 400 to 500 degrees Fahrenheit, which is my favorite. But that's not what we're after today. Today is about the taste of the charcoal and which one do we prefer for our food. But that's not to say we can't take care of the last 10, 15 minutes and just flip our birds uh, skin side down to see if we can't help render out any more of that fat. So let me bring the camera a little closer and just show you that process really quick while we let these birds finish. Okay, our chickens are done. And at this low temperature, I think the skin is as good as we're going to get it. So to not have them cool off too quick, what I'm gonna do is just take everything inside, slice it up and bring it back out for our taste test. Now to help keep track of everything, what I'll do is I'll put a toothpick in the Jealous Devil charcoal that is in our Joe Jr. And then two toothpicks in the piece of uh, chicken from our Fogo Super Premium. And I just won't use any toothpicks on the Komodo Joe Big Block, just so I don't accidentally mix up our three birds. And I can give you an accurate reading of the taste that we're getting from each. So I'll rejoin you back outside in a couple of minutes when it's time to do our deciding and appoint maybe a new champion. I don't know, we'll find out in a couple of minutes. All right, so let's go ahead for my favorite part of the evening, and that is our taste test. So I'm gonna start with the first toothpick, which is our Joe Jr. And that was using our Jealous Devil charcoal. Let's go ahead and give that a taste. That skin actually came out better than I was expecting. It wasn't just mush. That's a, that was a pleasant surprise. Forgive the smoke. I One of the things I like to do when I'm done a cook is just let the heat crank and burn off any of those fat drippings that might have uh, fallen onto our heat deflector plate so that we don't have to deal with this white smoke next time. So if you're getting smoked out on the camera, I apologize. So in terms of the, uh, the taste, it tastes a lot like uh, what it smells, not surprisingly, uh, which has definitely got a, a bolder, smokier uh, taste to it. It's not off-putting. I like my coffee black. I like it bold. Uh, and so, you know, this doesn't, you know, bother me, but you know, my wife and others in the family, definitely not as much of a fan of the bold, bold flavors. Um, but let's go ahead and try number two, which is our Fogo. That is crazy how much the smell is coming through in our experience on the taste. I'm having a hard time, except just for that last second when I swallow it, even telling, uh, telling that it was cooked on a barbecue. It was very close to oven, you know, cooked chicken until the very last second when I swallowed it. Then I just got a touch of charcoal flavor. So if you have anyone in your family who loves mild flavors or is complaining about the smokiness of your barbecue already, uh, I can tell that this one is an advantage, the Fogo, in terms of its mild smoky flavor. For me, I still don't like the sparks on a wood deck or sparks in my clothes. So for my personal taste buds, I'm not a huge fan of that, 
but I definitely would see it being very popular in a household where you maybe have someone complaining about the smokiness. Speaking of, I can see it drifting by. Let's go ahead and try our last one here, our big block. Oh, for me today, that is the Goldilocks of charcoal. Not too bold, not too mild, just right. Let me set down my plate and we'll do a quick recap. All right, so let's settle our scores now that we have done our taste test. We're all square. Again, when we're looking at year over year, the improvement in the quality, both in Fogo, which was the worst out of the bags that I checked last year to this year, they've been pretty consistent. Every one has been pretty good. And so I think we're all square, just like the, uh, the big block and the jealous devil were, were all even in terms of our price. We're in a tie jealous devil and Fogo. Those are the same price. Our Komodo Joe charcoal is going to go ahead and pull ahead a point here just because, you know, especially at the rate that I go through charcoal, uh, price matters. Now I can count on my fingers the amount of free bags of charcoal that I've been given in my lifetime, including Christmas presents from a family member. Uh, so I did go ahead and buy the Komodo Joe Big Block. I bought the Fogo. This particular bag of Jealous Devil is one that they sent me. I don't get, you know, unlimited, you know, free charcoal. So I'm still reviewing these as if it's my own money because many times, in particular uh, on a weekly basis where we're going through a lot of charcoal, doing a lot of cooks, it is me, um, you know, that is buying that uh, charcoal. So price is a consideration here and Komodo Joe is definitely still our value champ. Now, how about taste? So as we get to our taste category, I'm going to, um, for me, this is my taste buds, uh, give Fogo the lowest score on taste just because there, there hardly is any. If that's what you want though for your family, by all means, go check out Fogo Super Premium. I imagine if we were doing pizza or bread or something like this, poultry at a low temperature, where you don't want a lot of smoky flavor, it is definitely the most mild. Uh, Jealous Devil, uh, this temperature range is not its sweet spot for chicken. What it does really well is those high heat cooks as well as long cooks. It powered my Big Joe for 56 hours. It's dense, hard wood. It's good stuff in terms of burning a long time. But the taste today, it's not our winner. It's uh, especially at chicken at a 300 degree Fahrenheit temperature. It's just got a, uh, I can't put my finger on it, but a funkiness that is not bad, but it's also not really, really, really desirable. And our winner then on our taste test is the Komodo Joe Big Block. So whether we were getting a, an appetizer earlier, just wafting it and it had that sweet smell, uh, that's also what we got in our uh, taste test where it just came through with a little bit of smoke. So you know that you're cooking on a barbecue. No one's going to confuse this for sous vide. No one's going to confuse it for an oven. But at the same time, it's not like you're on a campfire and just walking into the forest and licking a tree. It is really, I think, the perfect combination of uh, fire-based cooking inside your Komodo Joe. And so here we are at the end of another test a year later and our top two are still our top two, but we're trading places. So I'm going to keep my top two. I still continue to buy both of each bag for different purposes. I like them, especially if I can find one on sale, but wanted to go ahead and congratulate our winner today, Komodo Joe Big Block. So that's it for today's video. If you liked it, please let YouTube know by smashing that like button and let me know by hitting subscribe to catch future videos. Until next time, I'm James from Smoking Dad Barbecue signing off. And remember, don't be afraid to fire it up. See you then. <music>